Hi, my name is David, and in this video, I'll be doing a comparison between Filmora 11 versus Camtasia 2022 so that you can find out which video editing software is right for you. Now, just to make it clear that I have both applications, this is Camtasia and this is Filmora. If you ask me which video editing software you should choose between the two, I'll tell you it depends on what you want to do with it. Now. If you want to tell me to tell you based on a purchase decision and based on maybe you want to do video editing specifically, I tell you to go with Filmora 11. And the reason is it is cheaper. And if we look at Camtasia, Camtasia is about $299. And when we look at Filmora, if you want to get this uh, a perpetual license, it's $79. $220 less and if you actually use coupons uh, you can actually get this for about maybe I think $60 or whatever the coupon will be going for so if you don't want to watch any uh, other part of this video then I'd recommend you go with Filmora instead of Camtasia now the reason why I tell you to go with Camtasia is because of probably uh, if you're into e-learning and you create courses maybe using PowerPoint and you want to integrate that uh, the, the, the PowerPoint plugin that's available uh, for Camtasia, uh, the Camtasia plugin that is available in PowerPoint. Uh, you record your courses that way. And number two, you create e-learning content that requires SCOM uh, packages, uh, whatever uh, the, termination, the terminologies are. Or basically, if you're going to be uploading your courses to learning management systems like Moodle, etc. That's when I recommend uh, Camtasia. Or basically, if you'd like to use the screen recording application inside Camtasia. Now, it's very powerful. It gives you multi-track uh, uh, clips. For example, if I'm doing a video, uh, maybe using my webcam here, and the screen, they're going to be two uh, different entities, and you can manipulate whatever you, uh, for whatever way you want. And also you can also manipulate the cursor movements whatever way you want now i feel that camtasia wins more if you're into e-learning not more when you're into video editing and the way i look at it is that camtasia is a stripped down version of filmora and based on the video editing capabilities so if that's why you want to use camtasia i'd recommend you go with it and i do have links for both of these applications down below so you can use those links, the affiliate links, uh, for the most updated pricing, uh, if I may put it that way. Now, let's look at the similarities. And this is going to be a long video, so that's why I made that clear, uh, that if you want to know which is better, uh, then you can go with Filmora if you're just into video editing. Now, for the similarities, I'll uh, look at the interfaces. Both applications look identical. So when you look at this Camtasia 2022 interface, We've got this section for the media, uh, where we go here, and then we have the timeline down here, and then we have the canvas and the export. When we look at uh, Filmora 11, more or less the same. It's just that now they've laid out these uh, different options very, very well. Now, inside these different options, there are tons of hidden elements that you may take a while to learn. Uh, simply put, They've done this really well, but you'll see the media section in this particular and the effects etc in this particular section and then the timeline and then the canvas where you watch uh, your previews etc and then the export button looks identical. And if I add something else, they're both easy to use. So if you're coming from a Camtasia uh, perspective, then you'll easily adapt to the Filmora uh, uh, environment. And also if you're coming from uh, the Filmora environment, you're going to easily adapt to Camtasia very, very fast because the user interfaces are identical. Because as you look at this, everything, file, edit, when you look at uh, Filmora, uh, looks almost identical. Now, uh, they both come packed with templates, etc. for you to use uh, with Camtasia 2022. You need to go, I believe, to library, check out the different options available here. Uh, to see uh, what is available uh, but uh, you can also download more assets also available in uh, Filmora 11 uh, we can also use transitions uh, that those are things that you can use you can use audio effects in both 
and uh, for Filmora uh, Camtasia per se uh, there are a couple of uh, effects available here when we go inside Filmora and you check out the audio uh, or basically uh, these are the different options that you can get with Filmora they actually just go uh, if I may put it this way they go crazy on everything uh, there's a ton of things that you can do there's a lot of music that you can use as for the effects you'll see uh, a bunch of things now when we look at something else that's important maybe for this video both Filmora and Camtasia they support Mac and Windows so there's a Camtasia for Mac there's Camtasia for Windows there is Filmora for Mac and there's Filmora for Windows I'm on Windows so you can see uh, those both applications available for those uh, two applications you can also work offline in both applications and you may require an internet connection to register your application or your video editing uh, software for that matter uh, but once you're done with that you may not need to keep logging in uh, to do all that now as for the import export options they are available in different uh, uh, they, they both support a wide array of import and export options uh, and Filmora actually wins in the export uh, and import options now I feel that Camtasia wins especially if you're working with PowerPoint presentations you can import PowerPoint presentations straight into uh, Camtasia and if I can just give you an update this is a PowerPoint presentation I can just drag and drop it inside there and it's going to load up instead of as a presentation as photos as PNGs now if I try the same uh, inside Filmora you'll see that uh, crossed out circle showing that it cannot import PowerPoint presentations now something else is that they both have bundled screen recorders now the Camtasia screen recorder in my own opinion is uh, the stronger or the better of the two and probably once the folks at Filmora watch this video they probably might need to check out what Camtasia has done best with uh, uh, their screen recorder and maybe upgrade theirs uh, and the recorder is always uh, available here you can see it uh, right here and uh, it's pretty awesome because you have multi-track recording where your webcam and your screen if you're doing a screen recording are going to be two different entities when it's recorded in maybe the aspect ratio that you choose you can manipulate that add masks to that but with Filmora 11 and that's the big difference it's not easily visible so if you've never seen how it uh, works you need to come here click on that record webcam record PC screen you can click on that and if you click on that everything probably is going to change and you may need to change whatever uh, settings you may need here I'll not activate my webcam uh, because it's using uh, the secondary webcam here I'll not activate that but uh, it's it's extremely uh, it's different in that when you record your screen your video is going uh, you you'll not be able to manipulate that particular footage uh, any other way uh, but when you're recording you can move the webcam wherever you want it to be uh, maybe to get out of the way if it's obscuring a couple of things now you also notice that they both have multi tracks on the timeline so you can uh, pack a bunch of multi tracks and when you look at these different options here unlock mute show track or hide track when you look at Camtasia it looks the same disable track lock track more or less when you look at the audio meter is it's right there when you look at this it's right there uh, to uh, zoom to fit to timeline when you look at Camtasia zoom to fit to timeline etc they look similar but now I believe everything has a difference so the first probably uh, maybe that might be of interest to you is what are the system requirements now if we jump uh, into this uh, for Camtasia you can clearly see that the least supported uh, OS is Microsoft Windows 10 a very big difference in that when it comes to Wondershare Filmora 11 uh, I believe uh, the least is Windows 7 really awesome so if you have an older version or you you're still not into upgrading to different operating systems you can still use uh, these uh, Windows 7 or Filmora in those different 
uh, uh, particular operating systems. Now, you'll notice that they have a minimum requirement of 8 GB RAM. When you look at uh, Filmora, it's 4 GB RAM. Uh, you look at the different options, they're just different in terms of the system requirements. Uh, and if I put it this way, I've used both. I find that Camtasia is more of, uh, it tends to be heavy on the system. Uh, if I compare it to uh, Filmora, uh, a little bit heavy, uh, you can check out uh, the requirements here for Windows, and then you can scroll down to, to check the requirements for Mac, uh, for whatever options available. Uh, for uh, this one, uh, you'll see the same here. And if you're using older versions, you'll just need to use older versions of Filmora 11. So uh, there are a couple of things, but I'll leave links to the system requirements in the description below. If that is something that you're into or you want to see if your laptop or your computer can support these different options. Now, the other difference, as I mentioned earlier, is pricing. Now, to me, Camtasia feels overpriced. Very honest opinion feels overpriced. Uh, $299, and as I mentioned, I feel it's a stripped down version of Filmora. Now, for $299, you can actually buy more or less almost three copies. Or actually, if you get a discount, four copies of Filmora. Now, to me, I think if you're doing video editing, it's a no-brainer. Camtasia is expensive. And I believe that Filmora is going to offer you more value for money because of different things. For example, uh, the you have enabled GPU acceleration when rendering videos. And I did a video recently where I walked you through which video editing application is faster, Filmora 11 or Camtasia 2022. And because of the GPU rendering, if your laptop has or your computer has a graphics processing unit, then Filmora gets a little bit better in that section. So if you're going for pricing, just go for Filmora. It's cheaper. Use links below to support the channel. They are affiliate links. Now, transition and effects. Uh, when I look at both versions, you'll see a ton of transitions. Uh, I believe uh, Camtasia, uh, over the past two years, they've added a ton of transitions. I believe they're 100 and something. But when we go to Filmora, these folks go bonkers and you see all these different transitions inside here, over 500 transitions. It's just chaotic. And sometimes coming from a Camtasia user perspective, I find this just to be too much, but I don't think it's too much. If you're into that, maybe it's something that you may want to use transitions that are out of this world uh, inside here. See what the different uh, options you have for birthdays. And the way I love it is that they do uh, package or uh, categorize everything the way it needs to be. Really, really awesome. But sometimes it can just be too much, but you can always search for the transition that you're looking for. Something that I do believe when uh, inside uh, uh, Camtasia is not available. You cannot search for whatever uh, transition you want. Now, also when we are we go into effects, uh, we look at things like visual effects. You'll notice that with uh, Camtasia, the effects are just limited. Just to be honest, uh, I feel that Camtasia has been lagging behind in the video editing industry. Uh, sometimes it feels like they've gotten comfortable, uh, but uh, when it comes to Filmora, it's just chaotic. I say they go hard, over 500 effects. You can just check out everything that is available here, search all those effects, ATC. If I put it clearly, they actually even have different options for you to choose from. So if you're into the video editing perspective, not more of creating e-learning or learning management system content oriented, I'd recommend you go with Filmora. You'll get more value for your money and a ton of other things that if you actually look at it, buying Camtasia will be more or less like buying four versions of Filmora. So. Uh, we get out from there and then we look at maybe things like subtitles and closed captions. Now, they both support subtitles and closed captions. But in my own opinion, I feel that Camtasia handles uh, subtitles and closed captions way better. Uh, so we can just drag this particular video here. Uh, we can just add it to the timeline and then we can go to captions. 
let's click on this import captions we can just go to something like this let's just import an srt file click on that it's going to be populated on the timeline now uh i've done a, a ton of videos asking these folks why can't we position the subtitles where we need them to be because i feel that the one place that camtasia fails when it comes to subtitles and closed captions is that positioning is not available uh it's really stressful uh, working with this especially if you have lower third graphics here uh you don't want to obscure that type of content it would be all awesome if they actually did something that really uh is customizable we do understand that they want to respect uh the ada that is americans with disabilities act compliance uh, but sometimes when you want to work with subtitles and closed captions it's really difficult but with this uh, you can embed captions into maybe your LMS content really awesome that's something I love about this uh, you can export uh, from here ATC uh, really awesome uh, and maybe another similarity again you'll notice that they both have speech to text uh, that is available on uh, Camtasia and then when we go to Filmora let's go to the media uh, I can actually just drag and drop both files now the only thing I notice with Filmora is that it doesn't recognize or more or less respect that this is a subtitle file if I just drag and drop yes it's going to show as a sub but it's more of a text so if I actually drag and drop it here that's our video uh, we can just match to media and then uh, we'll get our uh, audio here and then we can just drag and drop our subtitles there now okay sorry about that Control z home let's just drag and drop this particular file here so it comes in as a text not more or less as a subtitle but it's going to showcase right here if i double click on it this is where filmora 11 wins these subtitles and closed captions game in that you can do a couple of things that you want the time code is here the text is here really done well now other than that you can make changes to different options if i uncheck this and let's assume i want to move this particular subtitle up i can just click on it and let's zoom in slightly click on it and then just move it where i want it to be let's say i want it to move up there so once you do that uh if you look at your other subtitles they'll be where they need to be down here that is positioning what lacks in camtasia now i don't know why i did a whole video a couple of years ago letting them know of the things they need to do to stay competitive they're actually 22 uh but i feel that i don't know it's probably not in the scope of whatever production that, that they're doing uh but I feel that Filmora 11 does this way better. You can use presets, you can make your own custom fade-ins, fade-outs, subtitle animations, just a couple and bunch of things that you can do with your subtitles. You can just go crazy, uh, whichever way you want uh, with this. So click OK. And when we look at our subtitles, they're going to be up here. Now, the difference is that when this is rendered, let's just zoom to fit. When this is available on uh, your timeline, let's remove this actually dropped there by mistake when this is available on your timeline it just shows as one layer there are no subdivisions for example like in this particular you'll see the different demarcations where you can actually see where the start that is the time start of this particular subtitle to time end. now those are probably uh, some of the few uh, things in, in terms of the subtitles uh, but when we go to the audio effects, let's look for something like audio effects, audio compression, clip speed, emphasize, fade in, fade out, noise removal. That's what's available in, let's say, something like uh, Camtasia 2022. I feel it's limited, extremely uh, limited. And I believe if they look at applications, free video editing applications like Kden Live, they are doing a better job than Camtasia that has a ton of money. So uh, let's uh, actually look at this. We can just double click on this and see, uh, click on the audio, uh, see a couple of things that you can do to the audio. You can fade in, fade out, pitch. 
you can do equalizations for different options here so if you just want to go for country music that's what you can do there's audio ducking i believe it's also available here uh, it's it's what they are calling emphasize where you emphasize a clip or an audio and uh, the rest are actually going to be a little bit lower audio ducking is the same sorry about that audio ducking is the same here uh, so you can uh, lower the volume of other clips you can do auto normalization and this is also available in camtasia especially if you go to projects project settings auto normalize loudness uh, that's really awesome uh, so they both have that and then we can look at uh, maybe uh, normal denoise uh, so you can do that harm removal especially of maybe uh, an electrical harm you can do wind removal really awesome features uh, in terms of all these things and you have a couple of slider options you can do here you can set either the volume the left or the right really depends on uh, what you're looking for you can actually input a figure here uh, so that uh, the left and the right ear that is the volume coming in is balanced uh, just a couple of things that you can do but more than that uh, let's click ok uh, there are a couple of effects that you can add here uh, let's say we go for audio effects they are about 12 audio effects and here you can change your voice to a female driving sound AI robot just a ton of things these are things that are not available in I believe Camtasia now let's go to the next option with Filmora 11 you can do color correction so let's just double click on this clip and then click on color uh, for this you have a couple of things you can do uh, 3d enhancement you can do uh, white color balance uh, a couple of things here you can do tone just keep going when you look at this sometimes it's actually confusing just to be honest 3d LUTs these are still available in uh, Camtasia uh, color match you can match the color of XYZ but there's also the advanced option if I click on this you'll see a, a couple of different things you can use presets for black and white film really awesome awesome features for the price and any day I'd go with Filmora 11 you can do adjustments with a histogram available for the different options that you may want to change you can just drag and drop do all the different things that you want change it's more or less like a professional video editing application although sometimes it's done for like for beginners I believe it has what it takes for you to edit a video professionally inside Filmora 11 now let me just take a glass or a cup of water uh, because everything here is just too much now if we go to Camtasia uh, we can just click on more visual effects now there are a couple of uh, things you can see here uh, but let's say we go for color if you're actually looking at the color correction options uh, you can see you can do a color LUT and then once you do that click on properties and then you can change the different options you can import a LUT file uh, and then if you have uh, a LUT available uh, you can change whatever parameters that are available here and see the different changes that happen inside here you can keep changing everything the way you see fit now I don't find uh, the Camtasia color correction features uh, all that uh, I don't find them to be the best color adjustments you can do all these different things black and white grayscale whatever but I don't find them to be all that especially if you want to work in maybe if you're coming from uh, a, a premiere pro kind of uh, perspective and I know it's comparing Filmora 11 versus Adobe Premiere Pro is maybe a long shot but I feel that uh, this would probably be somewhere near there but uh, let's keep going because hey uh, there are different things you can colorize <laughs> you can do a bunch of things right inside here and obviously the green screen removal which is available also uh, in Filmora now somewhere else that I believe Camtasia doesn't have this let's just control Z to undo those changes because I feel uh, a little bit boring here uh, that I feel Camtasia doesn't have 
is that it doesn't have motion tracking. Now, motion tracking would really come in handy, especially in Camtasia. Camtasia has a very powerful skin recorder, screen recorder, sorry. And what happens is that if you want to blur sensitive information and your screen is moving up, up and down very fast, it can become a little bit hectic. But with motion tracking, would be really awesome to have inside Camtasia, especially to help you with motion tracking of whatever you want to track really, really fast. Now, with uh, Filmora, just reset all, just close this. Uh, let's go to video. You'll see the option for motion tracking. Now, I love the way Filmora does uh, their menus. It's just that they may be hidden if you've not used Filmora before. So you can check out motion tracking. Uh, maybe you can track somebody. You can track maybe and add uh, some text to follow up with that particular uh, motion track uh, so that you can make animated callouts that follow whatever, if it's somebody who is cycling, driving, etc. It's just really, really awesome to do this uh, inside Filmora, a cheaper version than uh, Camtasia. Uh, uh, maybe uh, another identical part that I mentioned somewhere is that there is the option for speech to text in both applications. Now, if I click on this speech to text, you'll see the different options. Now, language of the audio to be transcribed. And I feel this is where uh, Filmora 11 wins uh, because you can change the different versions available here. Um, I believe it's more than eight or nine languages. You can do a clip selection, the entire selection, and then transcriptions are automatically match the timeline as SRT subtitle files. Really, really awesome. Now, uh, the only downside is that there's a limit per month to about 30 minutes. I wish they made this a little bit uh, more, uh, but it is what it is. And you can check out a video I did on how to use a speech to text tool in Filmora 11. As for, uh, let's say, uh, Camtasia, the feature is available. So to activate it, you'll need to click on more captions. And then from this section, this gear icon, click on that and then you can click on speech to text and it's going to give you a couple of tips etc then you can click on continue and captions are created from audio on the timeline select the timeline range to use so you can select the timeline range whatever use entire timeline selected media only use the selected audio media whatever you want it's up to you now there is no selection of different languages so there is where Filmora will win uh, etc now Something else that Filmora wins in is that Filmora has the option for text to speech. And that's really awesome, especially if you want to create text to speech videos uh, for e-learning, maybe for product, maybe for promotion, or maybe if you're not confident with your voiceover and probably you want to share your knowledge with people out there. So uh, to activate that, just add your text, click on the text to speech feature. Well, it may not work right now, but Let's do this something simple. Let's click on a title. Uh, and once we get a title, what we're going to do, we're actually going to, let's say we just go with this one. And once you do that, you'll see that this particular icon is the text to speech icon is going to be activated. You can do automatic conversion of text to voice. So I can just double click on this and say, hi there or whatever. My name is David. Just click OK. Uh, you can just reduce this. Just hold it, bring it somewhere here. We can probably change the color uh, to maybe a bad color like red so that we can see what is going on there. Uh, but once we do that, if I click on this, I can click on the text to speech icon, click on that. And once we click on that, uh, we are going to activate uh, the text to speech dialog box here. And what language is the title in, or more or less the text? English, US, uh, different versions available here, more than the speech to text. Really, really awesome. You can choose a voice name or whoever you want to speak. Uh, different people, Mark, Bob, Lucy. Uh, you can choose the speed parameters. And this is something that is not available in Camtasia. Now I need to take a glass of water. Uh, my voice is uh, getting a little bit hoarse. Uh, so uh, you can see the different options. I'm not sure why they 
have the checkbox for transcriptions are automatically merged to the timeline because we are just doing a more or less an audio version and when you're satisfied you can click ok uh, the downside to this at the time of recording this video is that there's a limit of i believe 5000 characters so uh the characters might end up very fast especially if you're creating text to speech videos in filmora 11. now uh let's just cancel this but that is something that is not available in camtasia 2022 uh, and in this day and age, I believe these are some of the few features that are actually making some of these applications lose out uh, with the entrance of uh, video editing applications like Descript, which is an online based video editor that you can do speech to text, uh, text to speech, uh, more or less you can edit videos like editing text. Now, uh, something else that is not available in Camtasia is that there is no auto audio sync so for example let's say you're recording a video but you have two audio uh, recorders uh, let's assume one uh, does not pick up well maybe it's your camera and then you have uh, maybe a zoom recorder on the side you cannot do an auto audio sync in uh, Camtasia but with Filmora all you need to do is just make your selections and then do uh, the auto audio sync and your clips or your audio files are actually going to sync uh, inside very, very well. Now, something else that I love about uh, Filmora is that they do have something called the scene detection feature. Now, the scene detection feature allows you to detect different scenes uh, in a clip. And if you'd like to separate the scenes, you can easily do that. I did a video recently, I believe, on scene detection. You can check that out. But you just need to right click your clip inside here and then do the scene detection and you can uh, literally just do that in minutes uh it just cuts your your clips into the different scenes and then you can swap out and swap in whatever uh scene you want to be where you want it to be really really awesome feature now if we keep going uh you've seen there's something called silent uh silence detection so you can just right click on this if you have a whole section where there's no dialogue and you want it gone you can just click on silence detection and it's actually going to start uh, detecting uh, whatever you can set the different durations uh, the volume duration minimum duration softening a uh, buffer etc so you can do the different options here click ok and you can change the different options now what that does is that if you have very long gaps in your clips of silence it automatically cuts that out once you start uh, detecting and all that and then once it's done you can export to your timeline and the way this uh, works is that you save a lot of time especially if you you're going to keep up cutting different options uh, in that now uh, let's just exit this uh, there are a ton of more features and I don't think it's possible to actually even cover everything inside here but i feel filmora 11 wins over camtasia 2022 especially if your orientation is video editing purely for social media adding different effects funny effects you know f for what people are living in for the tiktok uh the the instagram videos the shorts youtube shorts filmora wins in terms of pricing in terms of the different effects that are available the one important effect or feature that I feel that also gives Filmora an upper edge over Camtasia is the GPU accelerated rendering. So if you're done creating your video and you go to export, once you click on that, one thing you'll actually notice is that when it comes to uh, Filmora 11, there are a ton of export options available from MP3 to MP4, a ton of options. This is not available in Camtasia 2022. Now, when you look at this particular section, this particular checkbox, if you have a graphics processing unit, you can enable GPU accelerated video encoding. Now, what that does is that if you have a GPU, instead of the rendering to be purely on your central processing unit or your CPU, the video is going to be rendered using a GPU, which is super fast. And I did a video on how those two uh, work and its influence now i've made a recommendation to camtasia the team uh, text team to 
to add that if you go to export uh, local file or whatever uh, let's just cancel this let's just go to export legacy file uh, or whatever way um, let's go to next uh, let's say mp4 you'll see first of all the export formats are just five mp4 wmv avi uh, gif m4a no mp3 that was removed a couple of years ago click on next if you are creating videos for learning management systems then the smart player options really come in handy and this is where mostly uh camtasia wins uh the size you can change this the video settings different options here audio settings options uh if you actually have closed captions you can do that uh captions initially visible and you can also see if you had quizzes and that is why i'm saying camtasia is more of the learning management system video editing application of choice uh, together with things like iSpring, uh, Adobe Captivate, uh, Articulate Storyline, Lectora, all those particular applications. But for this, uh, when you're done with this, let's say next and you want to finish your project, there is no enable GPU rendering. And if you're working on a big project, I've done that before, it can take hours, even when you have a high powered computer system. It can take you hours to render out a project. Now, probably this video may sound like I'm beating down Camtasia. I use Camtasia every single day to create tutorial videos because of the multi-track recording feature. And maybe Filmora will probably borrow that particular option uh, because they can uh, probably change somebody's workflow based on that. But for the time being, Camtasia wins in this particular section, especially for the, the screen recording. The only downsides uh, is that it feels more or less like a stripped down version of Filmora 11, although Camtasia has been around for a while longer. Not sure if it's the research and development or the innovation team that is uh, doing this slowly, but I wish they accelerated the process where they add these uh, different features that are of value to everybody. And I, I may not have mentioned, but uh, there are a ton of uh, library packs here. But the way that Filmora does uh, this particular thing, they do it really, really well. So that's my take on this Filmora 11 versus Camtasia 2022 versus video. Which video editing software is the best or the right choice for you? I'd go with Filmora because of the pricing and if you're just into video editing, uh, Filmora will work best. But if you're into creating e-learning content that will be hosted on learning management systems, then I'd recommend Camtasia. Or if your workflow is uh, revolves around creating screen recordings that you need to manipulate, maybe adjust uh, the headshot or um, do circular heads, do all those different things, add uh, CASA movements, add other CASA effects, then I'd recommend you go with Camtasia. But if it's just general video editing, Filmora will sort you out. So that's it for me. My name is David, and I hope this video is of value to you. Thank you so much for watching.